If you've been playing fighting games for some time, but haven't improved or are frustrated with where you are, you aren't alone. The genre, though fulfilling and insanely fun, is a frustrating grind full of failures which force you to take responsibility for your own improvement. It's something that separates it from other competitive genres. There's really nobody to blame but yourself. There's no other players on your team, it's just you. It is, however, an extremely rewarding experience that leads to some of the most exciting moments you can experience in gaming. I speak from experience. I've been playing fighting games competitively for quite a long time. I went from being the worst player in my squad of friends to winning tournaments. I've had crushing losses and amazing wins, but most importantly, I overcame adversity. Here are 10 ways you can overcome that frustration and improve in fighting games. Number one, surrender your ego. A huge part of improvement at any craft is learning from those that are better or more knowledgeable. Credibility is a thing in all areas of expertise. Um, this is what it means to be humble, to have humility, is you wanna really listen to everyone that is trying to help you. You could get nuggets of wisdom from somebody technically worse than you, and you could get a ton from somebody much, much better from, than you. Be open, be open to listening to others, be humble. Um, it could be kind of arrogant to enter a tournament um, for your first time and assume that you know better than the guy that's won them for the last year. You want to be able to overcome that adversity by just listening to people that want to help you. Believe me, you'd, you'll be happy you did. Number two, fighting games are about impulse control and discipline. Have you ever heard the term mindfulness? Like in regards to mindfulness meditation? It basically means just staying in the present moment. Fighting games, I really believe, are an act of practicing mindfulness. It's like a form of meditation. If you're able to stay in the present moment, this is gonna allow you to prevent autopiloting and control those impulses. This is what it means to have discipline. It's really a huge reason why people lose. They surrender to those impulses that, you know, like pressing a button on plus frames, I just wanted to press. And as soon as they get frame trapped, they, they do it again. They can't stop the impulses. Fighting and recognizing those impulses that are getting you killed is really, really important. Why did you lose? Next time you play, maybe don't burst at that horrible moment. Rinse and repeat and just Remember, this is what it means to have discipline, and it's what it means to play solid. Number three, believe in yourself. As cheesy as that sounds, it's really a fundamental important thing that if you do not believe in yourself, if you do not believe that you could be that guy, if you just so happen to play Daigo at Evo, then you never will be. You have to, at some level, have what I like to call a delusional optimism. You have to believe you could do it. You gotta be that guy if push comes to shove. And that's how you could overcome the adversity. That's how you could focus on growth. That's how you could have that growth mindset. At, beyond everything, beyond all the losses, beyond all the frustrations, deep down, you have to believe that you can do it. And I really believe that anyone could do it. You could do it. As Knuckle Dew once told me, confidence is everything. Number four, set achievable goals. For me, one of my goals is to win a super major. Being able to have goals, uh, maybe you wanna make a top eight at a local, maybe you wanna win one, maybe you wanna win an online tournament, maybe you wanna be master rank. Whatever the case is, you have to have a goal in mind that you want to achieve, and then through that, you could visualize how you're going to achieve it. Maybe you need to, like me, focus on how you could be Jacko. Through learning how to beat Jacko, that's how I'm gonna win Evo, right? Then once you do that, you put in the work and you complete your goals. You could do it. Number five, focus on improving at the basics. Fundamentals are the most important thing. This means getting good at basic combos, some basic anti-airs, footsies. Those basics will take you far. If you've ever heard of the Pareto Principle, which is commonly known as the 80-20 rule, 
This means that 80% of outcomes are controlled or decided by 20% of the activities or factors. In my opinion, the 20% are the fundamentals. If you know how to block, if you know how to anti-air, if you have a reliable combo, that's gonna be mostly it. If you get good at that, if you get good at whiff punishing, it's gonna take you incredibly far. Number six, find out what's most important to react to. Every matchup has things that you need to put into your mental stack that you could punish. They could be specific normals like Geef's charge standing heavy punch, uh, or moves designed to steal turns like Kai's Fudra arc or Geo's uh, drill kick. You wanna get into the habit of countering these things on reaction. Stop guessing in neutral and react. A lot of people like to preemptively throw things like maybe they'll throw the 6P preemptively to counter Geo's drill kick. But this gives you the chance to be punished because uh, 6P that is whiffed uh, can be whiff punished. So you want to be getting into the habit of countering these things by reacting to them. You can do it, it just takes a lot of practice. And once you get good at it, you won't really have to think about it or dedicate a large amount of mental stack. You'll just react. Uh, things like characters jumping in on you in Street Fighter. These are things that eventually you won't really have to pay too much attention to. You'll just eventually start anti-airing and once you free your mental stack uh, from things like that, you'll open up a completely new window of strategy, a completely new way to play the game. Um, free your mind. Number seven, collect information and play to your opponent's habits. A lot of people do not switch up their offense or how they're playing based on what the opponent has shown them. In Guilty Gear Strive, I'll like to do a block string into Rekka 1 and see what my opponent does. Do they like to press often? Do they like to sit and block? You need to match what your opponent is doing and counter it based on the information provided. Do they like to press risky? If so, frame trap them. If they like to sit there, run up and grab them. You have to counter what they're doing. In Marvel 3, this is like when they're coming you know, in on incoming, do they like to press often or fly out the corner? Then you better start meeting them. What have you noticed while you're playing somebody? You know, not, not everybody is the same. So you gotta be willing to switch up how you play based on what the opponent has shown you. And you do this by collecting information safely. If you fail to do this, you yourself will be red and you'll lose against a better opponent. So vary your options as much as possible and play to your opponent's rhythm. Number eight. Have a strategy in mind and do nothing until you see what you were waiting for. Doing nothing is broken in fighting games. A problem a lot of people have is that they're always doing something. They don't have the moment to just sit and wait for your opponent to take a risk. They feel like every second lost is bad. But sometimes if you do not have an option, if you don't have a move to make, you just do nothing and wait for the moment to present itself and just cash in. So if you have a strategy in a given matchup, it'll help you to stay in the moment and prevent your mind from drifting from what's happening in front of you. So you're able to do nothing and wait for what the strategy is if you know what to react to. So fighting games are all about risk and reward. It's all math, plus two this, minus two that. Learn what is risky for your opponent and learn how to uh, exploit it while at the same time learning what you have that can be exploited so you could learn to play as safe as possible. Use buffers that are difficult to react to. If something can be punished easily, don't use it. You know, unless maybe the reward is huge and it's, and it's worth it. Like for Chip, this is a, you know, a random Zanze Roga. Play safe and do nothing. Do not take risk unless the reward is worth it. Good players will punish you hard for it. Number nine, watch replays. Not just of the best players, but from everyone that may play your character. There are things you could learn from, you know, an inexperienced player just because they did one move in a really, really unique way. For me, this was a chip that was using J2K in a really, really unique way. He would just delay it in certain situations, and I never thought of that. But at the same time, you want to watch replays of the best players from, you know, that play your characters. If you play Geef, watch Snake Eyes play Geef. I'm pretty sure there's a crap ton you could learn from them. But most importantly, you want to watch your own replays. Whenever you lose an important match, if you lost in tournament, it'll help if you watch the replay and you try to problem solve the mistakes you made. I know it's painful. I know it's painful. I know it hurts to watch 
you know, that stream match that you could have won, but you didn't. It hurts, trust me, but you'll learn so much by just watching it and, you know, optimizing the solution for the mistakes you made. Number 10, use casual sets to experiment and learn. A lot of people, when they play casual sets, they're just trying to win. It's like, oh, I got this guy in a set. I'm going to play a first to five. I'm going to whoop his ass. But you know what, man? You just got to sometimes be willing to lose, be willing to be creative. Sandbag if you must, but try to do things differently while you're playing casual sets. You need to be able to experiment. Don't always just try to win. Try to learn by being being willing to lose. Like, it's extremely valuable to experiment as much as possible. Mash at those weird times. Use new normals you haven't touched. Use BRC at random moments. Dash further than you normally do. Spam a normal you don't use often so you can calibrate how good it is and how and when to use it. There are tons and tons of things that you could do in a casual set that you may not or probably shouldn't do in a tournament set, but you'll never know if it's good or not unless you try to experiment in casuals. Good luck.